All right, hello everyone, welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. I see people coming in. I see a Casey, Pam Nelson, Sharon, welcome. Give people a couple minutes, about two more minutes to get in here and we can get started. Feel free to use the chat and Q&A for questions. Let us know where you're um, viewing from. Hi, Sharon, how are you? We have Pittsburgh in here, I see. All right. I think I have Delaware, Newtown, welcome. Someone from Miami is joining. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, all right, I think we have a pretty decent amount in here. I think there's about, oh, they're still coming in. But we're gonna get started. Um, my name is Brittany Rivera. I'm with Eastern Minority Supplier Development Council. Um, and our guest today is not new to our council. Um, she is very familiar with us and we are very familiar with her as she's done work with us in the past. Um, previously, most recently, she has been a um, speaker at our ROAR conference. Um, so Serena Moore Thomas, is an experienced mompreneur, author, strategist, and water walker. Despite being a teen mom of twins with no college degree and very little resources, she has led several small businesses to multi-million dollar revenues, won hundreds of federal contracts, and continues to empower leaders around the world. Serena has an innate ability to help her clients consistently find success in seemingly impossible situations. Serena's entrepreneurial accomplishments coupled with her infectious energy and ambitious quickly caught the eye of national media, including New York Times, the cover of the Black Enterprise Magazine, Essence Magazine, NBC Nightly News, Upscale Magazine, and BETJ, and many others. Serena has received a myriad of awards highlighting her business pro proficiencies and next generation leadership. Her ability to develop, her ability to deliver deep levels transformations to individuals who are trapped by their ideas and paralyzed by their self-imposed limitations is evident in her high demand. This dynamic wife, mom, and business ninja is truly a woman on the moon. Without further ado, I will bring Serena to the stage. Well, thank you so much for that incredible introduction. Um, I am going to go ahead and share my screen and um, thank you everyone for joining. I'm going to ask that you do um, share your your business, um, your company name and your industry, if you would, inside the chat. That would be wonderful if you could do that. So I'm going to have you do that if you would share your industry in the chat. And if you don't mind, I also want you to share um, what's one thing that you want to take away from today's session, okay? One thing that you want to take away from today's session. And I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and share share my screen. I told um, Brittany, like I am super excited. About um, about this opportunity because there there's so much information out there and my my hope is that I can help demystify some of this and um, 
and introduce some new concepts to you, some some things that maybe you don't hear um, spoken about widely as it relates to federal contracting. Um, so just give me one second. For whatever reason, my computer is just a little slow in sharing, um, but keep on with your industry. If you would put that in there, that would be great. And I am going to share my screen. Also, at the end of sharing with you about an upcoming cohort that we will um, have a six week cohort where we'll dive deeper. Uh, we'll dive deeper into a lot of the things that we're going to uh, to talk about today. OK, so I apologize. It's still kind of just circling. It's going to share in just a moment. Everything seems to be a little discombobulated. I don't know what what's against me and EMSDC, but I want to tell you this. I um, I appreciate the work that you guys do, um, and I appreciate the opportunity to share today because um, this is the kind of stuff that I lived for um, in my early days starting my business. And so everything that I'm going to share today is not what I've heard, what I've read, what somebody told me. I only teach what I know. I only teach from my own um, my own experience. And so that's very important for you to know. So I'm going to, okay. I don't know why it's taking so long, guys. Bear with me just a moment. I promise you this only happens with us. <laughs> so I'll just give you a sec. And we will we will go ahead and share. And I am gonna stall for a minute, and then we'll we'll, we'll just we'll just share what we have. Uh, oh boy. Stand by. Brittany, do you have any other announcements you can make quickly while I get this to share? Because it's just not sharing. So I'm going to just go off and just do it again. Sure. Um, okay. I know you mentioned about the cohort that we will be um, launching in 2022. Um, I just want to make the announcement that this cohort is um, a partnership with EMSDC and Serena. Um, we are very excited to provide MBEs opportunity um, to you know this program that we are going to launch. Um, we are very excited to have so many people on actually this this webinar. Um, I see a couple people in the chat. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be worth the wait. I promise you. It's gonna be worth the wait. It will. It will. <laughs> Just gonna Serena, before you already know it will. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what's going on, but it's all good. I'm just going to go ahead and share um, for whatever reason. This this whole presentation is like out of whack, but I'm going to um, when it just started where we are. Okay. And I'll talk um, through most of it, but here we go. It looks like I can... It looks like I can, in fact, share my screen. All right, perfect. There we you guys see that? Can you see that? We do. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna ju jump in. If it's a little jumbled, we will we will walk through it and talk through it. Um, but I am very very excited to be here for the next uh, 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, we're not going to get it all in today, um, but we will get a lot of information um, to you. So I, um, I am Serena Moore Thomas, and I'm going to share, like I said, from my own experience today, but our specific topic is about winning federal opportunities without writing proposals, okay? Winning federal opportunities without writing proposals. Um, and so here's our quick and simple 
agenda. I'm going to introduce myself a little. Um, Brittany has already read my bio, so I'm not going to go into everything. But the part of my story that that's really important is the stuff that it relates to um, to federal contracting. Um, and so I'm going to share some more in depth there, and I will leave room for your questions and try to answer as many of those as I can. And guess what? If I do not have an answer, I will not try to make one up. I will point you in the right direction, okay? Um, so our introduction, then I'm going to lay the groundwork a little bit. We're going to redefine federal contracting for many of you, and I'm going to help you get an understanding of uh, simplified acquisitions, which is uh, FAR Part 13, really, really important. Um, and then we'll talk about what the next steps are. So the program that we're putting together here with um, EMSDC. Okay, so here I am. I probably look like I'm about six foot four in this picture. I am almost six foot four. If you see me in person, just laugh. Um, but my name is Serena Moore Thomas, and I am the destroyer of comfort zones. Okay, so for more than a decade, I've mastered the art of disrupting beliefs and behaviors that keep leaders unfulfilled and overwhelmed. OK, if you hang out with me long enough, I will brainwash you into believing in yourself and realizing that there is more to life than what you may be currently experiencing. OK, complacency, stagnation and indecisiveness are destroyed by the sound of my voice. All right. So I am going to challenge you to see your business through fresh eyes. I'm going to challenge you to discover opportunities in um, uh, in the midst of, of obstacles. I am the CEO of the Highmark Group LLC, as well as Serena Speaks. Um, I am the podcaster uh, at the BMW Life podcast, which is Boss Mom Wife Life. Um, not necessarily a reason to flip your collar. Um, my, my podcast is really meant for those who are wearing a cape, but your cape is on fire. And so we help you wusa and redirect your energy so that you can really build a wildly successful business without you losing yourself in the process. Um, okay, so that is Serena. I didn't start as the destroyer of comfort zones. I started right here. This is very important. I started out as a teenage mother, 17 year old with two babies, graduating high school. That's the actual picture of me on my actual graduation day, holding two children, okay? At that point, I knew that my life needed to take a different path. I had choices. I could become a statistic, I could quit, I could keep going. And so I decided to do what? Keep going. You can cry, but don't you dare quit. I really, really have a heart for small business owners. We have very difficult jobs, okay? Um, it, it is challenging to lead a company and to lead an organization and to have employees depending on you and people depending on you for all the things. And so um, I know what it's like, and I know what it's like to want to give up and turn around and just forget all of this and go get a job. Um, I have joked with friends before about running my businesses, like I have um, contemplated being a greeter at Walmart just something less stressful. Um, but I'm here to encourage you. You can cry, but don't you dare quit. My last year of high school, I started a business with my father and my brother. Some of you are familiar with our story. We started a construction site cleaning company with no money, zero, zero, zero point zero, zero dollars. Um, I had two babies, a whole lot of faith, a lot of determination and ambition. And I was showing up in every room like I was meant to be there. We started in my brother's old bedroom, later became Elohim Cleaning Contractors Incorporated. We had um, no college degree bef between the two of us. Um, but for those of you in the Philadelphia area, our company went from being a nothing and nobody um, to less than five years. We were, um, I was on the cover of Black Enterprise uh, in Essence Magazine and um, all kinds of things, winning awards and Madam C.J. Walker and all these other um, um, accolades, right? And in Philadelphia, we've done final cleaning for the Comcast 
Wellness Center, Avenue North dorms, the, the movie theater there, uh, Locust Towers, just a bunch of the targets, Aramingo Avenue, City Line Avenue, just a bunch of stuff. And we started with nothing. It was the 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 um, our start in the construction site cleaning um, area that kind of alerted me to what was possible in the federal government because I, like many of you, applied for every single certification that I could possibly think of. Okay. Um, so, 8A, I was 8A certified. I mean, I applied to MBE, WBE, DBE, SDB, HIJK, LMNOP, MSDC, you name it, right? I, I just, everything they said I qualified for, I wanted it. Um, that did lead me, though, to the 8A program. Um, the 8, the letter 8, um, I'm sorry, the number 8, and the letter A um, is a program that is run through the SBA. We'll, we'll touch on it a little bit here. Um, but it, during that program, that's where I really got um, a, a sneak peek into what it could look like to do business with the nation's largest customer. And I was very successful in the 8A program in that we secured um, multiple five-year sole source contracts through the 8A program. Um, how many of you in this, um, how many of you in this webinar are 8A certified? If you are tell me let me know yes i am no i'm not um and so i had a very specific strategy because for me i i don't like to do a whole lot of hard work if it's not necessary um okay not me all right if there's anyone that is then you're not okay cool thank you Thank you. So I'll explain a little bit about that program. The 8A program is very, very, um, a very, very good program. And it is one of the ways that you can win federal opportunities without writing proposals. And so I will explain a little bit about that in just a second. Um, but it was that program that introduced me to the wide range of opportunities that existed. Um, it is also that program that allowed me to be able to do business from my little office in Bristol, PA, um, and, and, and hold contracts and facilitate contracts in places like Texarkana, Texas, and Miami, and Wyoming, and Folsom, and all over the place without ever leaving my state. OK, and so I was able to hold five year contracts for janitorial services and facilities maintenance without ever even visiting the facility. That's one of the beautiful things about doing the business with the federal government. And so that's just one. But I'm going to I'm going to keep moving and we'll talk a little bit more about that, uh, about that program. OK, so write that down the 8A program. Um, this is my family now. I, I always show this because we are just a regular old uh, family of business owners. Um, and so this is not something I do on the side. My husband and I both have um, businesses individually and collectively. My children have businesses online. If I had a cat or a dog, it would be doing commercials. I promise you everything in my house going to do something productive. <laughs> so listen, we are on a mission to teach 500,000 small businesses how to succeed in the federal marketplace. It's called Mission 500K. And we have a very specific focus. And these are the terms you're going to hear me say over and over. OK, we have a very specific focus. We are focused on simplified acquisitions. OK. Simplified acquisitions, micro purchases, purchase card purchases, and then a very specific system called DIBS, D-I-B-B-S. We will not be able to get into DIBS but so much during this webinar, um, but I'm probably one of the only people that teach small businesses how to succeed in DIBS, which is the DLA Internet Bid Board System. Um, it is where I've won hundreds of federal purchase orders, okay? So after starting this very successful business and being in the 8A program with um, the construction site cleaning business, I ended up um, resigning from the family operation. Um, I went on to run another business where I supply Boeing aircraft parts to the federal government. 
Okay. If you put an aircraft part in front of me right now, I promise you, I probably would not be able to recognize it. Um, but I supplied uh, spare parts for the F-15, F-18, KC-135, um, Apache, and Chinook. Okay. And all of this, most of this was done with my computer and sitting in Starbucks or sitting at my office. Okay. And all of it was done through the dibs system. Um, and there is where we were awarded multiple purchase orders. Okay. So we'll get into a little bit of this today. Again, this is going to be a quick kind of overview. I'm going to drop some terms on you. Some of them you will need to look into further after this call and some you will just need to join the cohort so that we can dive deeper. Okay. I'm going to start with this 80% at success in anything. And I wholeheartedly believe this 80% of success in anything is psychological. I do believe it is mindset mostly. Okay. I am a mindset mostly kind of girl. Um, I do believe that only 20% is due to strategy. Uh, the steps needed to accomplish a, a specific result. That's Tony Robbins. Okay. Long, long before Tony Robbins, the Bible say, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Okay. And so I'm telling you now that 80% of success, I do believe this, this has been true for me. Um, I do believe that the majority of your success is going to be based on mindset. If you look at everything as an obstacle and you just have a hard time finding the opportunity, if you stay stuck in your seat of do nothing, if you constantly complain about what you don't have, what you can't do, what you don't know how to do, what, if that is your, if that is your mindset, you will see very slow and insignificant progress. I do believe that. Okay. And so I spent a lot of time teaching most of my students um, how to see through a different lens and how to see through fresh eyes and how to show up in the moment like it belongs to you because it does. OK, here we go. So you you're going to be the most important thing to this whole equation. If you want to succeed in the federal marketplace, this is here it is right here. You, Y-O-U, you are the most important factor. Everywhere you go, there you are. It's going to happen because you decide, okay? And I'm going to challenge you a couple in a couple slides with, with a few questions that I want you to ask yourself too. But you right now in this moment have to be willing to take personal responsibility for the income you make, the progress you make, what you do and do not receive, okay? It's going to happen because of you, Y-O-U. And then you have to be extremely intentional, it's time out in 2022 for showing up and saying, oh, maybe this will work. No, be intentional. Go in with a purpose. You should have come today, have already Googled me, looked into my background, saw on my Facebook. I mean, did all the work so you can ask the right questions. Be intentional. That's what it's going to take in the federal marketplace and any place else. Right. We're not showing up and seeing what we can get, what we might learn. I'm coming here and I have questions, real ones. I want answers. I'm intentional. Right. I'm making an investment of my time and I want to return on my investment. That's how you got to show up in every room. That's how I've showed up in every room. That's how, I, I, that's how I've acquired contracts and managed contracts that I knew very little about because I'm intentional. OK. So what makes a good client? I need you to answer this in the chat for me. What makes a good client? When you think about a good client, like your star client, just start typing some stuff in the chat. What makes a good client for you? What makes a good client? Give me some answers in the chat. Pays on time. I know that's right. Pays fairly, on time, loves your work and recommends you. Absolutely. Partnership. Thank you. Easy to work with. Someone who seeks my services. Yes. Effective communication. What else? Mutually. Win-win. Vested. Agreed on outcomes and time. Okay, it's going fast now. Is a constant source of revenue. Ready and willing and able to financially engage. Okay. Loyal. Mutual respect. One is stable can engage in a long-term service. Okay. All those things, 
right? All of those things. Guess who you just described? You just described the federal government. And let me tell you why. Yes, good client diversifies, loves and refers us, listens to our feedback. Absolutely, absolutely. You are describing the federal government. And let me tell you why, right? There are some very specific reasons why I enjoy doing business with the federal government. And here are a few of them, okay? So one, they are, um, and we're gonna just jump into just a couple facts, okay? The federal government is the nation's largest customer. They are the biggest customer, okay? They spend 500 billion plus a year and approximately 195 billion um, is set aside for small businesses. And I, actually these numbers have gone up tremendously, okay? The other thing that makes them a good client, they buy everything, everything from dog food to paper clips, okay? From aircraft parts to chicken, okay? From washcloths, to curtains, to missiles, to ammunition, <laughs> medicine, construction supplies, construction, so you name it. They literally buy everything. There's nothing that you can name to me that they don't have a need for, okay? Someone said a customer that pays on time, right? Well, the federal government is bound by the Prompt Pay Act. They're bound by the Prompt Pay Act, which means they, they have to pay you within 30 days. There are some opportunities in the federal marketplace where you can be paid as, as, as little as seven days. You can be paid on the spot for federal opportunities. I know, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to throw it all out there and I'll explain it. FOIA. Right. Some somebody said something about transparency. Right. FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act works for you. I can literally and this is how I won many sole source 8A contracts. I was literally able to go find the incumbent using the federal procurement data systems, FPDS.gov. Um, I was able to go in using FPDS find the incumbent contractor, find their award history, find the exact location to where I was about to go and, you know, um, take over the contract. And I was able to find the price, backwards engineer the price based on what I knew the cleaning schedule was <laughs> and submit a price that was right in line, all because of the Freedom of Information Act. And I'm going to pause here for a second. I need you to understand something. When I'm talking about, you'll, you'll hear me say federal contracting, federal contracting. There are a lot of people teaching about government contracting, okay? Government contracting, federal contracting are actually two different things, but they can be the same. Here's why. Federal contracts, obviously, it's a government contract. But many people that teach on government contracts are also talking about state, local, municipal. I'm not, okay? I don't play with the state. I don't play with the city. I certainly don't play with the local governments. Now, that's me. That's Serena. That's my personal choice, right? You may, and that's okay. But what I learned very early on in my entrepreneurial journey is I want to get to where the money resides, OK, the budget is made at the federal level. Right. When you do city contracts and state contracts, you may hear things like, well, you know, we're waiting on budget money to come. Uh, our budget was cut and therefore so are you. Uh, <laughs> you hear things like that at the lower levels. And so I decided that I'm going to figure out how to play up high where they print the money. OK, they don't run out of money. They print more money. I don't care what nobody says. Hopefully you guys are smiling and laughing. I can't see your faces. <laughs> so I, th that is a choice. So when you hear me speaking, I'm speaking about federal programs. I'm speaking about federal opportunities and I'm speaking at federal level. OK, some of these things do apply to the state and local level, but that's not what we're talking about today. OK, micro purchases. 
micro purchases i have i don't know why this is a very old slide under three thousand oh i know exactly what happened under three thousand no it is actually ten thousand dollars and under is considered a micro purchase at this time ten thousand dollars that was changed during the last administration okay a micro purchase is a purchase for goods or services under ten thousand dollars that does not require a contract it does not require a proposal it does not require a lot of things that many people associate with federal contracts okay um sole source awards again i have been the recipient of multiple sole source awards without writing proposals here's how i'm just going to give you this one this is free if you're in the 8a program this is great i'm going to explain it um in the 8a program the program is for nine years. It's a business development program, the only of its kind. If you qualify, which we'll pull up the qualifications in a second here, you should apply, period. It's, one, it's a one of a kind program. Within that program, you can only be in the program for nine years. There are specific set-asides for the 8A program, meaning an agency will say, this is off the table for everybody except for those in the 8A program, okay? Those 8A contracts that are set aside for that 8A company can only be done by an 8A company. But the 8A company is only in the program for nine years. The way that I received most of my contracts is I used the Freedom of Information Act and things like the FPDS, Federal Procurement Data Systems.gov, FPDS.gov, and I would look for companies that were about to expire out of the 8A program. What does that mean? If it's the year 2000, I'm looking for companies that are expiring in 2008 or nine. And then I'm going in and I'm looking up their company to see what contracts they have that are 8A. And then I'm finding the contracting officer. Then I'm contacting that contracting officer, positioning myself, knowing good and good well that that 8A contractor won't qualify to hold on to that contract much longer. Now that strategy works for something that's not um, a new buy like construction, right? Once you build the thing is built, it is what it is. But if your service, a service that is bought continuously on an ongoing basis, on a regular basis, um, it's a dynamic strategy because you start positioning yourself so that there's no um, interruption of service there are times when an 8A company is graduating and they've already identified somebody um, that they want to bring in as a partner. That these are these are ways to to get contracts without the proposal writing for something like that. In that program, I needed to submit only my price. You see that, and so negotiated contracts simplified acquisitions gsa schedules bpas these are all multiple ways that you can do business with the federal government and then there's still more we speak mostly about simplified acquisitions and like i said this is old it's an older slide i don't know how this even got in here um, but the the simplified acquisitions threshold is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and below okay $250,000 and below qualifies as a simplified acquisition. If you want to learn more about simplified acquisitions and what those entail, um, the letter contracts, purchase cards, things like that, then that information is in FAR Part 13. FAR is a acronym, F-A-R, and it stands for the Federal Acquisition Regulation. It is like the Bible of federal contracting. It is all available online, okay? You can Google FAR Part 13 if you want to learn more about simplified acquisitions, and we'll define it here in just a second. So if you've been to um, PTAC or SBA, uh, SBDC, some of the other places. And I'm going to tell you now, I, I love them all. 
I, I do. I love them all. I use them all. I teach my students to use them all. Um, but I also teach my students how to use those free services. Um, the, and, and I just said PTAC, which is Procurement Technical Assistance Center. And I know this is a lot of information. That's why you got to pretty much get into the cohort. Okay, we're going to do this for six weeks and I'm going to hold your hand. <laughs> so that's why, because it's a lot. Um, but PTAC is available. It's free. Right. And they do uh, presentations and they talk talk to you all about doing business with the federal government. Um, but this is from a P-TECH slide right here. Right. And so this is usually the process that is shown when you sit at SBA or P-TECH or SBDC or anyone's doing business with the government seminar. OK, they go through all of this the planning. This is the process. There's the planning and they identify the need at the, at the agency level, right? The government level. Um, and then they, the, the requisitioning um, of the requirement, then they decide on the set aside, if it's gonna be small business, if it's gonna be 8A, if it's gonna be hub zone, whatever. Um, they determine the solicitation methodology, right? Then the public notification comes out and prepare the solicitation and you issue it and then the bid proposal and then you receive the offers and evaluate the offers and a notice of exclusion anybody exhausted yet the proposal revisions and the source selection committee then the award and then the post-award debriefing who wants to do this how many people doesn't this sound like fun very easy right who wants to sign up <laughs> I promise you, I've seen this slide a million times. And when I was interested in doing business with the federal government and I would sit at these um, these little meetings and look at stuff like this, I don't know about you, but um, I was sitting in the back of the room looking like this. <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? Like, what are we talking about? This looks totally intimidating. There's no way I can do this. I don't even have enough time in a day to even figure out half of what you said. I don't know what's going on, right? Is it exhausting? Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I sat in the back of the classroom plenty of days looking just like this. What are you talking about, Willis? What happened is at these meetings, mostly at, you know, PTAC and SBA and different places like that, which I told you, I like them. They have purpose. You just got to know what their purpose is so that they can help you properly. That's what we teach you to do. Okay. Um, I love them, but they don't talk enough about the opportunities that are $250,000 and under that don't require any of this they don't talk to you about the fact that there are purchase card holders sitting in government offices right now with a government issued credit card and they can buy from you immediately all types of goods and services my very first federal opportunity outside of the 8a program my very first federal opportunity was with a purchase card it's a government issued card. I'll get into that in a second. So let's talk about what you don't need. Okay, what you don't need. Certifications. In order to succeed in the federal marketplace, you do not need certifications. There's a lot going on right now, a lot of government stuff. And, and again, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm, new, I'm not new to this, I am true to this. When I was on the cover of Black Enterprise in 2009, inside that magazine i was talking about federal contracting and why every small business should be registered in sam.gov at the very least that's step number one every go every single small business should be registered in sam.gov okay that's basic um you do not need certifications there are folks that are out here telling you that you need to be mbe you need to be wbe you have to get your dbe um let me explain something to you real quick i'm just gonna break it down for you dbe disadvantaged business enterprise is not even recognized by the federal government okay let's just be clear WBE or WSWOSB, which is women owned small business, um, they are that is recognized by the federal government. Very few set asides for women owned small businesses. MBE, you're the same as a small business. 
right? No extra credit for being MBE. Just is not. The, the federal opportunities or the federal set-asides that are recognized are the ones that ask you for your firstborn and some blood. That's 8A and hub zone <laughs> and service disabled veteran owned or veteran owned okay um so when you hear people saying you got to get these certifications first and then register and sam you do not some of the things some of those certifications like small disadvantaged business enterprise that's self you self-certify as that okay that does not take a lot of it doesn't take anybody you to pay anyone to do an application for you to submit it so that you can win and qualify for more opportunities when you winning opportunities and dibs where all you have to do is put in your price they don't care about your certification unless it is a set aside for that particular certification um now and and i know this is a this is a lot to to digest um it, it matters for some opportunities but it doesn't matter for all of them therefore it's not necessary in order to succeed in the federal marketplace i need you to understand that a proposal writing team you don't need one i haven't even talked to you about a proposal yet okay an office in dc Uh, address in DC um, in order for me to qualify for federal contracts okay not true um, past performance <laughs> now this is the this is touchy and you can argue with me it's all good um, again I only talk about what I know and have done <laughs> so here it is you do not need past performance for um, federal opportunities you don't guys and let me tell you i'll give you an example um there is a system that i teach my students about and i'll mention it in just a second in an upcoming slide and then i'm gonna we're gonna do questions and answers i'm gonna hit you with a couple things hard and then we're gonna go um because we're gonna do more of this in six weeks um but anyhow past performance i had a student of mine who um, had no performance in the federal marketplace. And we start, started teaching them about um, uh, purchase card purchases and micro purchases. And they registered their business in sam.gov. I teach them how to go into um, fedbid.com, which is actually Unison Global, F E D B I D.com. It'll reroute you. Um, there are a lot of people that teach on federal contracts that do not like that system because they believe it's all reverse auction stuff. It's not. I had a student who, um, again, registered in SAM, registered in fedbid.com. And during the 12, maybe six weeks of us working at, no, four or five weeks of us working together, um, she won an opportunity to supply dog food to the um, border patrol. She went on to fedbid.com. There was an opportunity. They needed a special kind of Purina, okay, for these dogs at the border. And she was able to develop a relationship with a supplier, get a good price, mark it up, supply it to the federal government, and walk away with her first opportunity. So you can't tell me you need past performance, okay? And I know some of you are already in your industry, and so I, I get it. You're not necessarily looking at dog food, or maybe you are. I don't know. Um, but it, it, even if you're in, let's say, construction services, right? If there is an opportunity, you you do construction, or even you do IT, right? Services, right? Um, you do services, but there's always another opportunity that I want you to see for product for supplying product to the government. Um, because as a construction company that builds, right, you have suppliers. You have suppliers like Granger. You have suppliers like Caterpillar. You have suppliers, right, for your materials and your equipment. And guess what? The government buys your materials and your equipment without your service all the time. So why not leverage your access to your suppliers to supply that same product or service to the government. Do you see what I'm saying? So again, what does the government buy? Everything. And I know we have questions and stuff already in there. And I'm, I'm just gonna take a, pic, uh, 
a peek real quick. Can you show how to find opportunities and dibs? Yes, I will. Yep. If you already have been part of 8A contract for nine years, is there time when you can reapply after so many years? No, you can't. Um, you can't reapply to the 8A program, um, but there are ways to do it. There are ways to to get involved with 8A um, contracts again. Um, and I can I can share something with you. Okay, please ask. Okay, yeah, if you put questions in here, I'm, I don't know, the chat is going crazy, so I'm not going to look too much because I don't want to slow us down. Um, but Brittany, hopefully you can pull some of them um, out. Okay, so again, they buy everything, everything, everything. Okay, not just everything, they buy everything, everything. So what do you need to succeed then? If you don't need those things, what do you need? Vision, pretty much. You need a vision. Um, you need a vision that's bigger than you. You need to connect to the vision of the agencies you want to work with. And so, for example, if you're a veteran owned um, business or if you've served in the military in any way um, and you understand, OK, you know, I want to work with this agency. Let's say Veterans Administration is one of the agencies you want to work with where well, you you want to understand what their vision is, what their goal is, and you need to connect to that. OK, the DLA, for example, which is one of my favorite agencies, the Defense Logistics Agency, that's dibs. And I will I'll, I'll just I'll stop sharing this and I'll go to dibs and I'll show you some stuff real quick. Um, the, just the vast um, amount of opportunities that exist every single day in the thousands and all they want is price, not a proposal and not a technical. And there aren't no attachments. There's no place to put an attachment. All right. But DLA, they are the logistics agency for uh, 11 combatant command plus allied nations plus um, all the, the all the different agencies they um, they they house material they ship and move product um, they they store product they they do so many different things and so they their mission is to make sure that they can get um, materials and supplies to our war fighters uh, like t in a timely manner on time and correct and so that's everything that's aircraft parts that's medical supplies that's textiles that is um there's dla energy which they they handle fuel and, and different things like that um so i understand what they need and i've connected to their um their agency goals and so i have a vision for how my company can support them Right. And so what do you need? You need vision. You need a vision that is outside of yourself. We're not coming after this just for the money, just to get to the to the to the bag. But you can actually support your the federal government by supplying your product and service. OK, um, so things you need vision. Opportunity. You don't need opportunity. You need to be able to discern opportunities. Because opportunities are everywhere, like everywhere. Um, just like I just mentioned, those two um, examples I gave with the, the um, construction company who can be doing product and service or the IT company. Do you know how many opportunities I come across daily for iPads and laptops and um, wires and things you have access to? I want a contract to, support, to supply Hootsuite. Y'all know what Hootsuite is? It's a social media management tool for, who was it? Um, uh, firearm and tobacco folks. Hootsuite. They're buying social media management tools, right? And because, again, the, the federal government is bound by the FAR, they have to put out solicitations for things. They do have to buy a certain amount from small business. And so opportunities are everywhere. You just got to be able to see them. And I help my students see opportunity where everybody else sees obstacles. OK, so when I sat in the back of that PTAC room and saw that same slide that I just showed you, I said, no, there has to be another way. I mean, I see they buy everything, but there's got to be another another way that's not this hard. <laughs> OK, and so the ability to discern opportunities, the ability to listen to contracting officers and listen to some of these briefings and understand where the need may be and position yourself strategically. Mm, you got to have that. Leverage I talked about, the same with the construction thing. 
So micro purchases, real quick. Want to talk about the ways you, you win without writing proposals. Micro purchases is it. We go through this in the class, okay? Simplified acquisition threshold. We go through this in the class. Um, here's a couple opportunities and resources. And this is stuff I'm giving you right now. This is free. So even if you don't decide to go into class, you can try to get all this free stuff. You can gather it up and see what you can decipher. And you can go at it on your own. Or you can just join us in the class <laughs> and um, let me hold your hand and work with a group of folks um, and have the accountability that you need. Okay. So a couple of opportunities. So there's a program called the First Look Program. So we're talking about opportunities without writing proposals. The First Look Program is, an, uh, is a program that has been launched and you can Google it, okay? Um, General Halt out of the Pentagon. Um, basically what's happening right now um, is they are looking to redirect the amount of money that they spend, which is like 1.8 billion the Air Force spends, Air Force um, Material Command spends, um, on a government purchase card. And so if you're near an Air Force base, the idea with the first look program is that they want to look right outside of the Air Force base to the local community and use their purchase card locally to obviously make a deeper impact right in the community where they are located, they being the, um, the Air Force base. Okay, it's called the first look program. When you're in the course, I teach you how to find these contracting not these contracting officers i'm sorry these purchase card holders the people holding that credit card teach you how to find them and what to say to them when you call them so that you can discover some opportunities that might be right in your backyard okay that's the first look program unison global where i told you about my student who won the dog food um, opportunity um, another student won an opportunity to supply lemon juice um, I've had folks win to supply dumpsters uh, on an as needed basis. So Unison Global is one of the places that I do send people to because they also buy with purchase cards and many of those purchases are micro purchases and they're simplified acquisitions. They don't require long proposals. Every once in a while, you will get someone there that do, you know, you have to provide some type of technical proposal, but nothing like the kind of proposals that you are um, often taught about, you know, for 10 year opportunities and IDIQs and things like that. FPDS.gov is one of the websites I told you about uh, where I, we use that for research. And so we go through that in the course as well. And, um, you know, nothing beats networking. It is what it is. Um, you, you have to network in order to um, in order to, to, to see the kind of results that you want to see. Um, so some of the things that I have um, I have you do right away uh, is updating your SAM profile. If you're not registered in SAM.gov, that's like step one. Like you can do that without being in the course. You should do that if you're not registered. Um, are you registered? Let me ask you that in the chat. Are you registered in SAM.gov? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, everybody's registered. All right, so within your registration, I want you to go into it. There's a very, very um, important update that you need to make. Um, with When you register for SAM, you were asked a question, and I had a screenshot. Oh, it's a small screenshot. You can't really see it. But you were asked a question during the SAM registration, and it says, do you accept credit cards um, as a method of payment? Okay, do you accept credit cards as a method of payment? Usually the default is no, but I want you to go in and update your SAM profile and make sure that thing says yes. Okay, accepting a, 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 a um, credit card simply means that you accept the government purchase card. The government credit card that they use, right, and that they spend um, in the billions, B, B, billions, <laughs> right? Um, that credit card, there's no special um, portal that you need. You can have a Square Up account. You can have just your QuickBooks online account. 
you do need to have level three authentication turned on. That just means that they'll be able to see what the purchase was for. It shows more in the credit card statement. Um, but there's no special um, technology that you need to have to accept the government credit card, but you do want to have that turned on on your SAM profile. So go in there today, do that. Okay. Um, identify five purchase card holders and ask questions. Now, of course, when we get into the course and the cohort, um, we'll go into like what questions to ask. And I actually give you a list of multiple agencies and their purchase card holders. You can Google it if you want to do that yourself, you can do that. Um, again, everything that the federal government does when it comes to spending our taxpayer dollars is subject to the federal, um, I'm sorry, to the Freedom of Information Act. So purchase card holders are listed publicly with names, phone numbers, and sometimes um, at multiple agencies, email addresses. You can ask questions like, what do you buy? <laughs> you can do that. Um, and so they have authority to use those cards um, to make purchases, all right? And then of course, leveraging existing relationships. Um, you, that's always a way uh, to, 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 to um, to do business that's in the government or outside of the the government who do you know who do you know that works at a government agency who do you know right so we'll go through so many different things during the six weeks and we're running out of time and i want to answer your questions and i do want to do dibs okay so i am going to do that i look forward to the cohort information and so um Brittany, can you can you drop that link while i'm talking um, I want you guys to still listen, but we don't want you to miss the link um, and, and she'll um, <laughs> no problem. Thank you so much. So there's the link for the cohort. OK, and I'm, I'm just going to um, I want to go to. I want to go to this. OK, so this is not your first uh, rodeo. This is not your first webinar. This is not your first time hearing some of this. Maybe some of it is new, um, but this is not your first time doing something like this. But here's the question. How different would your business look if you applied just 20% of what you've learned today? Like, seriously, just if you apply 20%. And I've given you some major free gems, okay? My normal classes, let's just be clear, are $1,797. My dibs class is $2,750, I believe. Okay. Um, we are doing this Mission 500K cohort with EMSDC because it is imperative that you get this information and get in line. The Biden-Harris administration um, just made another announcement on December the 2nd. Um, the first announcement was in June where they've committed to using the federal government's buying power to close the wealth gap for small disadvantaged businesses. And they're going to close this wealth gap by ensuring that 50% more contracts go to small disadvantaged businesses. That equates to over uh, about $100 billion over the next four years to small disadvantaged businesses. Okay, so what that means is that there are tons of opportunity, always has been, Right. But it's really going to be about you understanding what opportunities you want to pursue, having a plan, a strategy and having someone who knows what they're doing. Giving you advice, coaching you along the way. <laughs> OK, that's why we're here and that's why we do what we do. OK. These are the programs we talked about. If you go on sba.gov, if you're interested in any of the certification programs, we will go through this all in the, um, in the course, okay, during the cohort, okay? We'll go through this all in, cool. So in addition to the stuff that we said, consistent, persistent effort, a personnel plan, and a federal contracting strategy are going to be key to your success. That's, that's just it. You got to have to be consistent and persistent. Consistency, persistence will get you there. Consistency will keep you there. That's even if you're losing weight, y'all, right? If you're persistent, you'll lose the weight. If you're consistent, you'll keep it off.
<laughs> so your persistent, consistent effort, nothing um, can replace that. Your personnel plan, you must have a plan to focus the efforts of your existing staff to reach your contracting goals. Um, for those of you that have staff, right, um, we specialize in training, yes, business owners, but business owners do stuff like sign up for courses and don't finish it. And they also, you know, uh, invest a lot of money in things and then get uh, pulled away by another distraction and then another distraction and they struggle to remain persistent and consistent. And so if you do have a number two, if you have somebody, your BD, your admin, um, whoever is supporting you, uh, you need to have them in our courses so that they can learn and so that you'll have somebody to share this information with, okay? Um, we specialize in equipping the people around you so that you can get the kind of results that you need to get, okay? There's so much more. I can't go through it all. Okay, questions. Let's go to questions. Brittany, it would probably be easier for you to unmute <laughs> and tell me because I don't know. I will, I will come on here. Um, thank you so much. I feel like every time you do something for us, I always learn something new. Um, there's <laughs> always so much information um, that you share with us. So I want to thank you for that. Um, we do have a question from Rachel um, Houston. She asks, how much is the six week so I have um, dropped the link to the registration in the chat. Um, pricing is there, but I will disclose that the first 15 EMSDC certified MBEs and subscribers will receive a um, scholarship from EMSDC. Um, oh. But all that information is there in the um, registration. Um, what are the dates for the cohort? So the cohort officially begins February 21st of 2022. Um, and Serena, I'm not sure, but you may wanna speak on how that goes a little bit if you want. Yes, so the way that it's gonna work is you're gonna get access to our self-paced course, right? So you'll get online ac access and you'll be able to kind of work through modules that you'll have access to forever. But then you and I, or the group and I, my team, will meet three times during the six weeks. So every other week we will meet on a Monday morning um, for I believe it's two hours. And um, we will meet during that time to go over the information and then to introduce new information. That is your hands-on time. That is your coaching time. Um, that is not the time to call in from the car because I will have you on these portals looking up things, asking you questions, and really getting hands-on. Every single person that attends, I will have you pursue at least one opportunity during that six weeks. I'm not playing. I don't care if it's a micro purchase or whatever it is, you're going to pursue at least one opportunity during those six weeks. So like I said, it's it's some self-paced, you'll work through, and then every other week you'll meet with um, with me and, and my team. I promised you that I was going to show you something in Dib. So if you're still here, I'm going to do that. But what what other questions did we have? Uh, okay. The first 15, you guys better snatch those up immediately. Like I told you, my, my course is $17.97. You can come to me directly if you want to, but EMSDC is doing a, a, a wonderful thing for you. <laughs> so get in there. So I do see a couple of people have said they can't see the registration. I'm going to check on that actually right now. Um, so give me one second. I'll be right back. Serena, okay. if you'd like to share your information. Yeah, no problem. So that system I was telling you about dibs, we, we do. Um, I have a whole separate course on dibs. This is on serenathomas.com. It's a whole separate course. Um, on dibs, but during the six weeks, you will get, you know, an intro to dibs, but this is the DLA internet bid board system. Okay. And the, I, I play in this area right here, RFQs, requests for quotes, which means uh, no proposals. They just want pricing. Okay. 
every single day and if I could pull it up RFQs by um, by issue date so let's say let's go today today there were 599 opportunities listed here for various items um, signal pennant uh, there's all kinds of stuff I didn't sort these by anything um, so machine bulb there's all kinds of uh, I'm trying to see if I see anything that's familiar a lot of things are um, mechanical parts or um, a clamp a screw a machine screw fit assembly a lot of these things are um, spare parts it's, it's just all kinds of um, it's all kinds of opportunities in here but I'll tell you something about dibs that we love okay so when I click on this NSN it tells me exactly who the approved source is, which means that, um, and, and this is what we did with Boeing, I had a BOA, a blanket order and agreement with Boeing, which allowed me to be able to order from Boeing. See, y'all look at small businesses as, you know, Boeing, oh, help me, my little small business. I teach small businesses how to be the giant. OK, you know, David and Goliath, y'all know the story. The Goliath was bigger, but David was the giant. Y'all just let that rest. <laughs> Goliath was bigger, but David was the giant. And so that's the approach that I typically teach, which means this, right? For me and my relationship with Boeing, Boeing allowed me to purchase from them. What does that mean? We write a check to Boeing. I'm not asking Boeing to do anything for me. All right. So I have what I call the bigger business. Then there's the big business. Then there's the small business. So my small business goes to the big business and says, let me supply your stuff to the bigger business, which is the federal government. That's the kind of stuff I teach. This is how I get this done without write proposals and stuff like that. I don't know who's teaching that. Serena is though. <laughs> so if I had a relationship with General Electric, for example, I could go to General Electric, I give them this part number and I'll say, and I have their cage code here, but this part number, how much is this part? And depending, and I'm, I'm simplifying it for, for this because I, I don't really know what this is. But the other thing about divs is check this out here's the whole solicitation which you don't have to fill out any of this because all of it is it's an online system only so there's nothing to print and, and submit but check this out in every single solicitation in dibs there's procurement history cage code the contract number the quantity how much they bought it for and when it was awarded so this is telling me on June the 10th 2021 um, this company, because all these cage codes stand for a company, this company won a contract to supply five of whatever this item is at $120.62. Because Dibs gives me all my procurement history, I can literally base my pricing based on history. Like, where else can you do this? You can't do this anywhere else. Where else can you actually see all the, the history of what it was procured for? And look, it's not the same company every time. It's different companies. So it's not that they just want it from one person. These people are distributors, maybe. Um, some may, this might be GE directly. I don't know. But it's not the same uh, cage code winning. These are all separate companies it could be the approved source it could be a couple small businesses but do you see that where where do where they do that at <laughs> i love this stuff i'm sorry okay i'm, I'm done i'm done i'm done with that part <laughs> so Brittany, did you have um yeah, I just wanted to close. Um, I apologize. I'm not really sure why our registration link is not um, working because it says it's public and fine on our, event, our, our end. Um, but I'm going to drop my information below so that um, if you are interested in this cohort, email me directly. Everyone who is registered today for um, the webinar is going to receive a copy of this uh, webinar recorded. Um, and we will send out the proper or correctly working registration link. Um, I will 
Tanya, I do see your comment. Um, but like I said, I will issue that registration link. I apologize. Don't really know what it is. But when we get together, <laughs> Serena, something's always like <laughs> wishy-washy <laughs> on tech, tech side. Yeah, I don't know what it is, man. Because we, at, you know what? It's, it's, it's okay. It's yeah. all by design. You're going to get in here. You're going to get in there. Um, so I do have um, a couple people that I see already emailed me about their interest in the program. Um, I will respond to you accordingly, um, but just work with us on the technical side. We're going to get that registration link up and running ASAP, um, and I will put the information here. Okay, awesome. So this is the last thing I'm going to share, guys. This is it right here, AI. You guys know what this is, right? I just want to redefine it for you real quick as you get off of this phone and go about your day and attack the day with enthusiasm. Um, AI artificial intelligence okay there's a different meaning for it and i want to tell you what it is when you attend a webinar a seminar a conference and you do absolutely nothing with the information you've received congratulations you have become a little more artificially intelligent okay remember my name is serena moore thomas destroyer of comfort zones what i do okay and so instead of becoming artificially intelligent i need you to be an activator of insights an accelerator of ideas i need you to always be intentional be absolutely impeccable with your word articulate your incredible value abandon indecisiveness and apply the information you've learned that's all I want you to do. Don't be more artificially intelligent. Be an activator. Be an accelerator. And abandon indecisiveness. Let's go get it. Can't wait to work with you guys. Thank you so much, Serena. I see the emails coming in already. There are a couple people already interested. I'm pretty sure it's going to be more like that throughout the day. Um, but again, thank you so much for your information, always dropping knowledge on us. Um, we appreciate it. Again, one more time to everybody who's on attendance right now. We are working through that registration link. You can email me at brivera at emsdc.org if you are interested in the six weeks cohort. Um, it will begin February. Um, registration will be open until the week before. So you have plenty of opportunity to register and we will get that link out to you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye.